أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى أهله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد You guys first of all happy Turkey Day happy Thanksgiving and yes it is permissible to say happy Thanksgiving because it is not a religious holiday this is not your Christmas or Easter this is a neutral like Fourth of July kind of thing so yeah like celebrate have a great time with your family eat a lot of turkey and don't pass out. So, inshallah, I hope inshallah you guys are having an amazing day. Speaking of Thanksgiving, I'm super thankful that Ismail Dalia, the president <laughs> of UWM MSA, has joined us for this special edition. Ismail, welcome yeah, to Sunnafix, man. Thank you, thank you. Glad to be here. Absolutely, you know, I know you bro since you were, I believe like four and a half feet tall. Probably. And uh, yeah, <laughs> and uh, I remember, like Subhanallah, may Allah bless you, you and your father. Like whenever I look at you guys, I think of the masjid because of no. so <laughs> many times I've seen you in and out of the masjid, man. Subhanallah. <laughs> the days we used to mess around uh, after like Quran class or something. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and and you know, speaking of being thankful, I am so grateful and deeply humbled by the people who are tuned in right now. You know, y'all could be you know, watching the Bears and the Packers play right now, but for you to tune in and like stay consistent and the most beloved deeds for Allah are the consistent one. Well, I thank you so much. You guys are like the model of consistency. Allah bless you and Allah reward you and uh, make this another beneficial session for you. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alam. So y'all today, we want to dedicate our session to surprise, surprise, gratitude. Yep. You guessed it. Uh, specifically, we're dedicating our session to a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Ismail, where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Hadith comes in Abu Dawood and Al Adab al Mufrad." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam starts out by saying, "Whoever is not grateful to Allah will not be grateful to the people." And in in another narration, he flips it. He said, "Whoever is not appreciative of the people will not be appreciative of Allah." either so he combines the two together it's almost like a virtuous cycle one trains you for the other like if you have yeah. spiritually trained yourself to thank allah it will spill into your interactions with the creation yeah. now i have a question for you and also for the audience and if you see any comments that you want to highlight please do but here's a question yeah. why would the prophet link ingratitude towards people with ingratitude to allah like if you are not nice, if you're not grateful to your spouse or your sibling or the or your friend, why does that all of a sudden end up with ingratitude towards Allah? Like how does that linking occurs? Any thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean, like in my opinion, or like I mean, it'd be like going hand in hand um, in that aspect. I mean, like uh, you're thankful, like or thankful, like towards your spouse. Just, I mean, like remember at the end of the day, Allah created everything. So I mean, uh. if you're not grateful towards your spouse or family members family friends i mean it's technically you're not like you know what i mean uh as uh as thankful to, to allah you know what i mean so, i see yeah i see uh, you know building on what you just said um one of the scholars used to say it's something beautiful they're like one of the reasons why the prophet links it like that is because you see with your own eyes what people do for you you see the sacrifices of your parents you see when your family comes through for you the favors your friends do to you if yeah. you cannot appreciate the seen, how will you appreciate the unseen help of Allah? Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And, and that's the profound part. Like, because appreciating Allah is on a whole new level of ghaib. It's at a different level. Like, you know, the Packers are playing. If you can't win against the Vikings, how you won't beat the Bears? Like, it's, exactly. it's a different level. You know, inshallah, yeah, yeah. inshallah they come through. Inshallah. You know? Yeah. And you know, I'm mind blown, bro, by an ayah that I came across that I want to, subhanAllah, it's just left me astounded in this regard. Uh, yeah. let, me, let me preface it by asking another question. Have you ever wondered why is it that some people end up accepting Islam, converting, and becoming closer to God over others? Like, like the uncle of the mm -hmm. Prophet, وسلم, Abu Talib, he supported him. He was there for him, but, but he didn't become a Muslim. Yet Abu yeah. Sufyan, his arch enemy, did end up accepting Islam. Like, what's the divine criteria for choosing one person to guide over the other? Have you ever given thought to that, or is that cross your mind? 
Um, I mean, I, I think at the end of the day, just the different perspective on life. I think just a positive outlook. Um, yes. Positive outlook. More thankful. The like for the smaller things, even not even like major things. You know what I mean? Oh, Always looking at like the smaller things because all that adds up. Like I think we overlook a lot. Uh, yes. Just like being born Muslim. You know what I mean? Yes. Or like having like a roof, just like the small things. I mean, don't get me wrong, like doing great in school, getting that job offer or anything like that is alhamdulillah, yeah. you know what I mean? Thank God, but the smaller things think for sure, just the- Yeah, the, having the, the AirPods, like, mashallah, you know? <laughs> it's really like yeah, yeah. glasses. Like small I, things, I, yeah. I sometimes wonder, I'm like, what did people do back in the days without glasses? Like, are we yeah. just more blind nowadays? <laughs> like what's going on? Yeah. Um, you know, subhanAllah, in Surah Al-An'am, Allah drops a hint when it comes to the divine criteria of selecting who gets to be guided. And I was floored by this. Let me share this with you. Quraysh at the time of the Prophet they were taunting the Prophet about who is following him. And they're like looking down on the followers of the Prophet the initial followers. And they're like, these are the losers that follow you. These ex-slaves and the, the common folk, they're not even rich. And yeah. God chose to guide them over us. And we're the elites, we're the influencers. Yeah, and God is guiding these losers, the, or as Hillary Clinton would say, basket of deplorables. You know, these are the people God has chosen yeah. over us. Yeah. And uh, Allah responds to this objection. He says, Alayhissallahu bi a'lama bi shakirin. Allah responds to this by saying that, does anyone know more than Allah who is truly grateful? Yeah. As if to oh, say, yeah. as if to say, grateful heart is the starting point of guidance. Okay. Building blocks, stepping stone, your rock to get to Allah. Like that's the starting point. That, that, that gratitude has to exist. That thankfulness yeah. has to be there if you're going to make any spiritual progress. Yeah, no, no, yeah, 100%. Man, and you know, Shaitan knows that real well, which is why like I get chills saying this. Um, Shaitan, when he's talking to Allah, he's like, Ya Allah, I will leave no stone unturned. I'm gonna come from every direction, front, back, left, right. I'm gonna bulldoze these fools and I'm gonna leave no stone unturned, every angle covered. And then he says, This is powerful. He says, And I know I'll be successful. Here's the litmus test. Here's the performance metric. You know? Like he's like, yeah. I know I've scored a touchdown with humanity, you know? <laughs> yeah. When the following occurs, what is that? Wala tajidu aktharahum shakiri. When majority of them, when a majority of them become ungrateful. Oh. Dude, that's the litmus test. Like when majority right. becomes entitled, pompous, ingrates, you know, yeah. full of themselves. That's shaitan's way of knowing we're making progress. We're, we're yeah. getting somewhere. Mm -hmm. Man. Just like looking at what you don't have, so, not what you do have. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So let's let's do everybody a favor. And why don't yeah. we define the three steps or three components of gratitude? So now, Ismail, I'm going to ask this question and I'm hoping we can start like a brainstorming process with the people yeah. online. You guys, I have, let me share something with you. Islamically, we have three components or three steps when it comes to gratitude. Gratitude can be divided in like three steps. I'm hoping we can kind of brainstorm what, the, what those three steps would be. Like imagine uh, like Smarie, it's Thanksgiving and you ended up like cleaning the garage or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and let's say your parents come <coughs> out and they're like appreciative. What's yeah. the first step of showing appreciation? And then the second and the third. Let's see if we can brainstorm it out because if you can figure out something yourself, it sticks. And we tend to remember what we kind of came up with. What do you think are the three steps or at least one or two steps of gratitude? What do you think? First thing, acknowledgement. Acknowledgement, acknowledge. very good. Yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. I like that. I like that. Very yeah, good. Yeah. That's actually spot on, by the way, as you're going to see yeah. when I give the uh, answer key. Go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah, acknowledgement, I would say, uh, I mean, of course, like uh, gratitude, like saying like, so like acknowledge that they did, like I cleaned the garage, say, and saying. So verbalize, oh, thank it, you. can I say verbalize? Yeah, you can say that, yeah. Very good, very good. And then um, and there's one more left, which is, is very, you know, has Islamic tinge to it. Appreciation. So that goes back to verbalizing, yeah, acknowledging. Yeah. There's one more step left, especially when it comes to Allah. This step is very, very important. So 
Here are the three steps. I'm going to start with yours. Recognize, which you said acknowledge, yeah. same thing. Recognize. I'm going to make it rhyme so you all can remember. No excuses now. <laughs> Recognize, verbalize, and utilize. Oh. So here's how it breaks yeah. it. Recognize, recognition is the first step where you recognize the favor from Allah. Then you verbalize it by actually saying something like Alhamdulillah or actually like yeah. talking it out. And then finally yeah. you use that blessing to obey Allah. Okay. And you utilize it to please him. Yeah. So these are the three steps. Let's quickly go through each of them one by one. Let's start with the first one, which is recognize and acknowledge. Mm -hmm. This is where you're acknowledging that Allah is the ultimate source of that blessing. All right. He, the ultimate credit goes to Allah. Yeah. Not your luck, not karma. <laughs> Everything. All right, not Everything your horseshoe stuff stuffed to the yeah, luck. Yeah. <laughs> not your horoscope, stuck to Allah, stuck to Allah, you know? It goes to Allah and Allah alone. In fact, uh, Ismail, like, we as Muslims, because we know tawfiq comes from Allah, enabling comes from Allah, even we do not give ultimate credit to our own skill and effort. Secondarily, yes, we worked hard, but we know ultimately tawfiq and enabling comes from Allah. Yeah. And, and a lot of times, we can, it's easy when you go through life to lose sight of the fact that Allah opens doors for you constantly. The unseen hand is facilitating for you. Like, yeah. had it not been for the fact that your resume landed at the right spot at the right time, you would not have gotten your foot in the door. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And if you can think I, of some specific examples, I would love to hear from you. Um, I mean, like, if you just think about it, I mean, just in a general, like, way of, like, as you were saying, everything everything goes through him. You know what I mean? Like, yes. uh, like I mean, like, looking into, like... Uh, I, I can't even think of something off the top of my head. I mean, you yeah. keep thinking. I'm going to drop a few more. You keep thinking. Um, you, uh, had, had, it been, had, it been not, had, had it not been for the fact that you were in a great mood and had a, no headache and you made a killer impression at the job interview, you yeah, might not, sure. not have gotten in. Or yeah. for the fact that had you, some people get really lucky working for a boss yeah. who's moving up real fast and they end up moving up with him. And had it, that not been the case, they would not be the VP, one of the youngest VPs in the company yeah. or for the fact that if someone had they not invested in bitcoin at the right time they would not have made the killing that they did yeah. or man like or for all of us watching or at least for most of us we're lucky enough to either be born in america in a family living in america or moved early to america which has enabled us so many opportunities yeah. kids in yemen or, syria they don't have that you were saying, or even like, like I was saying before, like, like us just being like born Muslim in general, you know what I mean? Yes. Or being born in such like a community to where there's like a big Muslim population, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like a lot of masajid around, um, like everyone pretty much knows each other, uh, yes. in some way, like shape or form, you know what I mean? So that's, yes. that's always a blessing in disguise. And I think people take that for granted because there's a lot of towns yes. that like, there's only like a few Muslim families or they're so far spread out that like nobody knows anybody. Subhanallah. You know? Subhanallah. And, and, you, and you know, on that note, I always caution people, especially Muslims, like we want to be careful when, when we want to be careful when we say things like I'm a self-made man, because yeah. that kind of disguises a spiritual arrogance and like I'm here because of my effort, yeah. my skill, yeah. my charming personality. Yo, like chill. Allah facilitates things for you. Yeah. Let me give you one example. Bill Gates, Malcolm Gladwell, the famous historian, he writes in his mm -hmm. book Outlier. He says Bill Gates was lucky that he was born at a perfect time, 1955. Because as soon as he came, as, he, as the college age came, that was the perfect time when computer industry was going through age transformation from room-long mainframes to a manageable size where you can actually program. Then he ends up at the best possible place, which is University of Michigan, which has a, one of the best computer programs in the country. And then he gets more lucky on top that he gets to log in so many programming hours for free, hitting that... 10,000 hour threshold that it takes to yeah. become world class at anything. And then he was blessed with grit, perseverance, a high IQ. All of this is what underpins the emergence of Microsoft that made him the richest man. I saw like a nice comment. It was like, gratitude so easy. It's so hard to find. Uh -huh. That's a, that's a really <laughs> good comment. SubhanAllah, man. And you know what? Scientific yeah. studies right now are coming out. You guys remember this, if you forget what I've said so far. Right now, scientific studies are telling us there is nothing that correlates with our well-being as strongly as gratitude does. Yeah. And this should remind you what Allah says in the Quran. Woman shakara fa innama yashkuru When you think Allah is not benefiting, the 
beneficiary is you. You're the one who improves. Your physiology improves. Your psychology improves. Yeah. You feel better. Your mood improves. Your depression rates drop, you know? Everything's a lot easier for you, too. I mean, like, if you're always looking at, like, oh, this is going wrong, this is going wrong, a lot more is going to go wrong. You know what I mean? Yes. Or it feel like it's going wrong, at least. But if you have a positive outlook, like, hey, everything happens for a reason. This yes. is a blessing in disguise. Is like, always having, if something doesn't go your way, just always, like, remember, like, hey, it's for a reason. Something better will come, inshallah. You know what I mean? Uh, at the end of the day, it, everything's uh, you know, just being, that, like, grateful and content and, like, yes. of what you have. And, and, you know, I think you'd agree with me, uh, Ismail, to acknowledge or recognize the first step, recognize yeah. Allah's blessings. To recognize, you need to reflect. Because like, it takes sometimes a little bit of reflection to appreciate the micro and macro blessings of life. Like uh, yeah. an amazing cup of coffee, like the one I just had, like a Spanish latte sweetened with condensed milk. Like I, I know I sound super bougie, but like <laughs> that's so, such an amazing blessing. Or, or for instance, like, you know, a Black Friday deal you scored. Yeah. Or it could be, you know, a safe commute to home or yeah. to work, uh, an amazing Taking a step meal. Back. Say it, again. Say it again. Taking taking like a step. I'm sorry to cut you off. I'm just like no problem with you. I mean, like take a step back, looking at life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, not comparing yourself to others. Yes. Uh, like people around you, like what they do or don't have. Yes. Because uh, it goes both ways. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, being content with what you have, like, uh, and just being grateful. You know what I mean? Being grateful can I feel like goes hand in hand. Um, in, like that aspect. That's amazing. And Vara was saying Allah keeps. Keep in mind that Allah is the ultimate planner, whether you see it or not. Like the div the unseen hand operating in the background. Like you know, uh, sorry. Let me ask you this: Have you ever thanked Allah for the wetness of your eyes? No, I like yeah. I know. Yeah. I, <laughs> do, I do, mean, do you, do you yeah, know how of... miserable you would feel if that eye became dry? And some people have that yeah. disease where it becomes dry, and they are in it's a lot of hard. pain. Yeah. That's what I mean by reflection. Like you gotta sit down and reflect yeah. and contemplate. That's like how many of us know that the electromagnetic field of the Earth is protecting us from fatal rays from the sun? It's Jupiter is your cosmic shield protecting you. You don't even know. Yeah. Like Dawud alayhi salam, well, it's it, it, it is said regarding him that Dawud alayhi salam started to realize yeah. this, and he's like, Ya Allah, I don't know how to thank you for all these blessings because. The very act of thinking needs thinking. Did you get that? Yeah. He's like, yeah. the, the fact that I'm being grateful requires me to be grateful to you because you kind of gave me that soft heart and that grateful heart yeah. that can actually verbalize it. Yeah. And, and you know what Allah responded? Like, if I can translate into the modern lingo, Allah is like, now you're getting warm. Now you're getting yeah. started. You know, yeah. now you're getting somewhere. SubhanAllah, that's the smart starting point, that recognition, that humility, yeah. man, that Allah is the ultimate planner, the ultimate source. Yeah. So we spent a lot of time on the first step, which is, once again, is recognize. The second yeah. is verbalize. Say something. Thank you, ya Allah. Alhamdulillah. Like, wa amma bi ni'mati rabbika fahadith. Proclaim. Like, this should come up in conversations, with what Allah has blessed you with, in a, of course, humble yeah. way, instead of flexing your baller status. You know, talk about God's blessing. And, and that's, that's something our Prophet Sallallahu would do. Like in the middle of the night, Aisha radiallahu anha tells us, hadith in Sahih Muslim, that one night she woke up, bro, and the Prophet wasn't there. So she's like, I went out to look for him and I find him, of course, in the masjid, erect in front of Allah. And so this is so beautiful, so wholesome. In the middle of the night, in the most private of moments, in the most intimate of conversations, the best man, in the best place, at the best time, what does he say? He's like, Subhanaka, la uhsi thana an alayk wa anta kama athnayta ala nafsi. Ya Allah, I can't do justice when it comes to being grateful to you and praising you. You are, as you have described yourself, your blessings are what they are. I can't even do justice, Ya Allah. This is our Prophet also just recognizing the blessings that Allah made him a final prophet. He gave him the greatest book, the greatest ummah. His ummah will be 80% of Jannah. The Prophet is grateful for that. And this, the hadith I'm about to share with you now, Allah melts the heart. Um, it, it just floored me when I came across this hadith. You know when Khadija radiallahu anha died, our Prophet also fell on hard times. 
yeah. financially, he was in a very difficult state. Aisha radiallahu anha tells us later that like two months would pass, stove would not be lit. And she would mention how like his clothing had patches and his bedding was so coarse that it would leave marks on his back. So our Prophet Sallallahu fell on hard times. Listen to this hadith. Mm -hmm. The Prophet Sallallahu was given an option by Allah. Hadith comes in Tirmidhi, where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is basically presenting to the Prophet Sallallahu that if you want to be a rich Prophet, and there were rich Prophets in the past, so it's not a taboo. If you mm -hmm. want to be a rich Prophet, no problem. You see that hill? We'll convert, literally convert the hill to gold and give it to you. You'll be rich overnight. No problem to say the word. Mm -hmm. You know what the Prophet said when he's given this offer? He says, La ya Rabb. No, Ya Allah. Rather, Uridu, and this is so beautiful. He's like, <clears throat> He's like, Ya Allah, I'd rather be hungry one day and satiated one day. Hungry one day, satiated one day. Why? Because hunger will humble me in front of you and remind me of you. And being full will make me think full in front of you. And so I want to be in the state of humility and gratitude, you know, patience yeah. and gratitude. And that's who he wanted to be, sallallahu yeah. alayhi wa sallam. Like, what? Yeah, oh, it's, it's crazy. It's like the way that he, like, used to think, I mean, it's hard. I mean, it's hard for us. I mean, like, that's like another thing I wanted to bring up, too, is like, like, uh, always thinking about, like, yeah, being grateful for what you have. And then also the stuff that you didn't get or the goal that you didn't reach. Like, always know that, like, Allah's protecting you from you or he has something better for you. Yes. I mean, always yes. looking at stuff that way. You know what I mean? Like, uh, we get caught up on, like, the smaller things. I mean, of course, like, myself. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes I'll get caught up on something like, oh, I, this, this, I didn't get the grade that I wanted. Or yes. Any, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's the small things that we just, like, as I was saying before, take a step back and just knowing that Allah has everything um just looking at like the simple blessings is like yes. you're talking about like so tears fun. like the tears in her eyes or like you know what i mean like just the gravity in general you know what i mean like kind of lights it's crazy Amazing. i mean it, like you, you 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 can't there's there's no way you could just think about everything you know what i mean so like fun. it's it's amazing. everything has a, allah has a plan at all times and, and you know ali radiallahu has said something uh, remarkable he said he said increase and gratitude are twins very interestingly, he's like, when you thank Allah, Allah increases you. And never do you experience a decrease, except it is probably coupled with lack of gratitude. So like twins, they stay together, man. And, um, you know, this, um, just kind of speaking of verbalize, yeah. I'm hoping we as Muslims, like, alhamdulillah, should become such a regular part of our communication and just talking. Yeah. Like, it should just roll out of your tongue, mm -hmm. whether you're talking yeah. to Ismail or Sam. Yeah. Salman or Sally, yeah. like it should come out, non-Muslim, Muslim, like it should, it should be part of yeah, our yeah. vernacular and discipline. No, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. And, and so, Ismail, let's quickly recap. What was the first step? If you can just remind the audience. All right, we got acknowledge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> acknowledge uh, or recognize. I'm sorry. Yes. Recognize. Um, you gotta help me here. I, yes, and then verb verbalize, verbalize. Yes, and we got. And now here else. we go. The last one, utilize, and that utilize, is yeah. utilize those blessings to please Allah. And this yeah. is where something I hope you guys will remember this long after you've forgotten Sunnah Fix and Brother Amir. Uh, remember this, Junaid al Baghdadi said, and Allah, I ever, ever since I came across this quote, I'm analyzing my life in light of this mm -hmm. quote. He said, true gratitude is that you don't use Allah's blessings to disobey Him. Wow. Think about that. Yeah. Like, I, I, I got chills thinking like, yeah, yeah. true gratitude is, not, is to not use Allah's blessings to disobey Him. What are our iPhones being used for? You know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. If, you're, if your booming business is booting you from the masjid, yo, if you're, you know, if you're splashing your iPhone, all it's, it is for is swiping right. And like your, yeah. your good looks <laughs> and your, your good voice is just yeah. a tool of attraction for haram attention. Like, like Mela Protect, man. What are our AirPods being used for? I'm asking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what is on, you know, what's on your top not, Apple Music? Not using our mouths to curse even. Yeah, also, uh, man. Not using our eyes to watch haram. You know, like, or like, I mean, it's or like you know, your ears, like for music. I mean, like, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's crazy. Subhanallah. It, it really is. I, I'm going to end on, I want to end on this story. 
Um, not trying to pick on any specific gender. It's just that the villain in this story is a lady. So I don't want to get any <laughs> hate mail. So I'm just putting You're gonna a disclaimer. You're going to get canceled, man. Uh, I'm gonna, <laughs> I don't want to get canceled. True. So um, in this story, a lady needed a kidney transplant. And it was a, an emergency situation. So uh, obviously, they put her on a donor database. And they're, doing, they're checking the next of kin. Lo and behold, the matching kidney was found in the husband. Mm-hmm. Poor guy, right? He's got to step up now. Like, prove, <laughs> you know, yeah. the, it's time to put prove the love. So um, yeah. he gladly actually steps up and he gives one of his kidneys. So what happened? Obviously, she's fine. Now, like, imagine their relationship, I'm sure, went on a whole new level. And, like, mm-hmm. you know, I'm sure he's getting three yeah. meals a day and whatever. But anyway, <laughs> um, a year later, the guy finds out that the wife of his has been cheating on him. Oh. And he's devastated, yeah. outraged, and he's so broken. And he's like, yeah. you cheated on me, and I give you a piece of me. Yeah. I gave you one of my kidneys, and you do this to me. Like, how ungrateful can you be? And I'm, I want to take that story and apply it to us. Are we being kind of like that lady where yeah. we're using Allah's blessings to potentially disobey Allah? Like, Allah, you gave me eyes, but I'm going to look at haram anyways. Yeah, yeah. Give me ears, mama. Listen to haram anyways. Give me hands and limbs, but I'm a conduct haram anyways. Oh, man, man. I like Barat. Barat comes. Uh, he wants a refund. He wants his kidney back. <laughs> yeah, I think he uh, took her to court and uh, filed a lawsuit. Yeah, American style. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Subhanallah, man. Allah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala protect yeah. us. Allah make us people of gratitude, man. I mean, I mean, yeah, no, like uh, you could definitely relate to that. Like you know, I mean, what we're doing with like our phones, TVs, I mean, what we're doing with like the computers. I mean, um, I mean, we get blessed every day that we wake up. You know yes. what I mean? I mean, yes. it's kind of like, it's crazy. Like how, like, or waste, like another thing is like, we should be grateful for time. I mean, yes. we have 24 hours in a day and just like laying around on social media all day, uh, watching Netflix all day and not being productive. Yes. I mean, sure. Everyone has their lazy days. You know what I mean? But like yes. just in general, um, we should always be thankful for our time and utilize it correctly. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, Ya Rabbi Alameen. Barakallahu feekum. You guys, one action item I leave you with, and I've been doing this for a while, I'm not trying to flex or float this idea or whatever. I just share this, try to lead by example. Um, try this, and I promise you, your happiness levels will increase. You'll feel so much better. Your stress levels will go down, and you'll be a happier person with good vibes. <coughs> you need that in these tumultuous times. After okay. Fajr, oh, assuming you're waking up for Fajr, but if not, may Allah help you. But anyway, the, your first prayer. Um, right after the prayer is done, just sitting down for five minutes and just meditate over the last 48 hours and think of micro blessings. Macro too, but specifically focus on unique micro blessings and savor it. You, this is not you like flipping through pages here. Think of that blessing and linger upon it and savor it and try to summon that feeling of happiness you felt when you got that cup of coffee or that new coffee shop or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. linger upon it. You got a new gift for Thanksgiving, whatever, you know, just linger, savor, and try to live, relive that moment. Last 48 hours, maybe the last week, just do that for five minutes. And you, it's just the, what it does to you physiologically and spiritually, it's phenomenal. So try this, yeah. I promise you. And uh, DM us on, you know, ISM Core if uh, your life. I'm going to try that. Please, please do. And uh, keep me in your du'as, you guys. Um, That's all I had, you guys. That's our Sunnah Fix for today's Thanksgiving edition. Ismail, I'm so happy. Thank you. This was a beautiful conversation. Thank Thank you for for having me. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. Yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be bugging you more often, bro. No, I mean, hey, I mean, (laughs) just let me know. Inshallah, Inshallah. Barakallah, you guys. Take care. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Have a good one, guys.